Good morning. morning. Welcome back to the Lord's house. Maybe that's me, welcome back. No, you guys have always been here, right? I was the one that was away. But welcome back to the Lord's house. Uh, Another week, though. Uh, Another week that we get to hear the good news of our life and salvation, the good news of Christ dying and rising again for us. So uh, uh, Vicar's going to preach and proclaim that today, so listen well. And also we're going to have the ringing of the bells and the singing of our first hymn. Uh, But first, let us greet one another with God's peace, with a wave. We rise for the invocation and our confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And we take a moment for silent reflection on God's word and our own self-examination.
Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and with which I have ever sinned against you. Forgive me and Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. To you, O Lord, I call, my rock, be not deaf to me, lest if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield, in him my heart trusts. And I am helped. My heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to him. Glory be. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Glory be to God on high and on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, let your merciful ears be opened to the prayers of your humble servants, and grant that what they ask may be in accord with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the 15th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 35. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come to save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. We continue now with our psalm of the day, and we will read Psalm 146, whole verse by whole verse. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. With his breath, hearts, he returns to the earth. On that very day, when he has perished. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever. Who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are about death. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle reading is taken from James chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. My brothers... Show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet, Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my brothers, my beloved brothers. Has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme and honor the honorable name by which you were called. If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, and you are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works. Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, 
You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the Alleluia in verse. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through sight into the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hands on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears and after spitting, touched his tongue and looked up to heaven. He sighed and said to him, Epitha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the gospel of our Lord. We now have the joy of confessing our common faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. Congregation may be seated as we sing our hymn of the day, Voices Raised to You We Offer, Hymn 795.
In the name of Jesus, amen. Today in Bible study, we wrapped up a two-week study over the first three chapters of the book of Genesis. And in that study, we've tried to emphasize a few things, one of them being God is the creator of all things, that he created something from nothing, and that he did it all by speaking. And in the creation accounts found in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, you see a word used quite often to describe God's creation, and that word is good. Because everything that God created was good. But as you know, the fall happens. And the creation that is within the world is no longer good, but is now corrupted and sinful. It is no longer man and God living harmoniously in the created order God had established. But it is now man versus man and man versus God. The peaceful garden that Adam and Eve have come to know no longer exists. They now live in a world filled with death and division. You don't even have to go very far to see this threat today. All you have to do is turn on your TV, put on any national news outlet, and you can see the fear and the hopelessness that this world has to offer. And because of that, it might be easy to tell yourself that God has abandoned his creation, that God has abandoned you. But the message today is that he hasn't, not even in the slightest. When Adam and Eve fell, God did tell them the consequences of their sin and did curse them for their sin. But even more, he promised them redemption. And God makes sure on that promise of redemption because he comes in the person of his son, Jesus, to save us. And in doing so, redeems us and restores us from our fallen state. The whole purpose of Christ's death and resurrection was not that we could have redemption from the world, but it was for the redemption of the world. But we can be honest, you are avid churchgoers. You come here knowing that this is not a work that I have to do to please God, but this is God coming to me to give me life, to give me gifts of life and salvation. But even with that good news, and even with that solid belief, life does feel pointless at times. Life can feel meaningless at times. That day in and day out, we just go through our emotions. And that the only real certain thing in life is that things are uncertain. Whether it has to do with finances, the state of our nation, or even our own bodily functions. It seems that we're bound to live in a world with an anxious heart and a body that decays. That this world and the life that dwells in it, even with all of its technological advancements and all its scientific discoveries, seems to move towards disillusion every single day. And why does evil always seem to triumph? Why does COVID not seem to go away no matter how many things we try? Why do babies end up getting killed in the womb out of, out of convenience? And how does a group like the Taliban end up winning? Now, you may think you have an answer to these questions. Well, it's because people won't get the vaccine. Well, it's because people won't take responsibility for their actions. Well, it's because our government doesn't know what it's doing. Maybe. But also maybe not. Maybe it's because we live in a world that is corrupted by sin that has corrupted individuals, and that being slaves to sin puts one on a path that ends in death. The world that you see that is so corrupt, that is so evil, is because of a choice our ancestors made in the garden so long ago. And it's a choice that stays with us even today. But you are all baptized children of God. You know this. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you to call you to repentance for when you sin and fall short. And you can look at the world and say, this is not what God intended. But even knowing that, your hearts are weighed down at least some of the time. 
They're burdened with anxiety, uncertainty, fear, or even anger, because this is the world you have to live in. And for that, God has a word for you. Bold words to set your troubled hearts at peace. Be strong, fear not. For when God says fear not, pay attention, because it is not an empty platitude, and it is a more than just a command. It is a word that casts out fears, for God himself is promising you it and is acting on it. In both the Old Testament and in the New Testament, God announces his actions of salvation and forgiveness with the words, fear not, all to comfort anxious hearts. In the Old Testament, he says to Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Through the angel, he proclaims to Bethlehem's astonished shepherds, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy for all people. To the terrified disciples in the midst of the stormy sea, he says, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And the risen Lord, who speaks to those confused women on Easter morning, he says, do not be afraid. People loved by God, this is the message for you today. Be strong, fear not. For God, coming in the flesh to save you is the remedy for your fear, for your anxiety. With these words, God reminds you that he is not against you, but is for you in every single way. Because just think about it. If God were against you, if God were your enemy, why would he put on human flesh, take on human blood, suffer and die on the cross to save you? His vengeance and judgment on your enemies, which is sin, death, and the devil, were executed in Christ, who bore your sins on his body on the cross and paid with them with his blood. And being raised from the dead, he speaks to you a word of a different judgment. It is absolution. It is your sins are forgiven. The reconciling work of Christ is not a rescue from creation, but it is the restoration of creation, and that includes you. God is not trying to extract you from his creation because he created you both in body and soul to live within creation. Sin is what brought the fear. Sin is what brought the anxiety. And sin is what brought death. But by the blood of Christ on the cross, he has reconciled all things on heaven and earth to himself. Christ has redeemed you in creation. He has purchased and won you in both body and soul for himself. Here again, the words from Isaiah and how the signs of redemption are bodily. The eyes of the blind are open, the ears of the deaf hear, the lame walk, the mute sing. Martin Luther says in his large catechism, where the soul is healed, the body is helped as well. Today we will be partaking in communion today. And as we come through and receive the body and blood of Christ, I want you to pay attention to pastor's blessing at the end. He will say to you, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your body and soul are being preserved for the day that Jesus returns to establish his never-ending kingdom. The day he will wipe away all tears from our eyes and where only joy and happiness will be found. What shall our response be to this? Well, I think the one in the catechism summarizes it, summarizes it pretty well when it says, For all this it is my duty to thank, pray, serve, and obey him. You have often heard of Christ as being the light to a world of darkness. And for you who have been redeemed by God through Jesus Christ, you live in the light of the last day. Because Christ will come again, and with him will bring a new heaven and a new earth, a home of righteousness. But in the meantime, as you wait, do not wait with trembling at all that is untrustworthy, all that is uncertain in this decaying world. 
Rather, live as those who have been redeemed in both body and soul by Christ, who was crucified and who is risen, who says to you, be strong, fear not, behold, your God will come again with vengeance, with the recompense of God, he will come to save you. That is a promise you can trust. For God is faithful, and he will make sure on that promise to you. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise now for the prayers of the church. And in our prayers, we have uh, several additions uh, to make. Uh, one is for Monica Burton, who is a, a member who's suffering with cancer. Uh, uh, the family of Doyle Hart, as Doyle passed away this past week. The family of uh, Madeline Thompson, this is Wendy Beard's mother, she passed away this week. The family of Maxine Beausolaire, uh, Patty Walkenhorst's mother, who passed away this week. Um, for the health of uh, 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 Heath York, Carol Zimmerman's son-in-law, Angela, and Jean Apple, who's back into the nursing home right now. So let us pray for these and all people, for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, in holy baptism, you have caused waters to break forth in the wilderness and made streams in the desert of this world. Open our eyes to see this new life in Christ and our ears to hear your word. Free us to walk uprightly and loosen our tongues to praise you for this treasure. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you have made us all heirs of your kingdom through holy baptism, holding us to the faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. Keep us from showing partiality and making distinctions among ourselves, and make us rich in good works. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, create and sustain in us a lively faith in Christ Jesus, and lead us by your Spirit to be active in all good works. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, help parents to raise up their children to know you as their help and hope, that they may not put their trust in princes in whom there is no salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we place, our hope in, we place our hope in you and ask your blessings upon our President Joe and all rulers, that their plans may be ordered for the welfare of those they govern, and that you would ex- execute your justice for the oppressed. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, behold graciously the sick and those in any need, especially for Monica, Keith, Carol, Angela, Jean, Joe, Dwayne, John, Zach, Wesley, Brittany, Cheryl, Kathy, Joe, Bob, McKenna, Willard, Myrna, and Lloyd, Holly, Macy, Christine, Bill, or Billy, Bennett, Aiden, Marjorie, Patricia, and Mark. We also lift up to you the families of of Doyle Hart and Maxine Beausolaire and uh, Madeline Thompson, as they all suffer the loss of their loved ones. Remind them of the resurrection of life in Christ for those who believe. Not only through this word here proclaimed, but also through the neighbors and friends. Raise up people into their lives that will comfort them with this great word of life and salvation in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, grant all who come to the Lord's Supper this day would do so in repentance and faith for the forgiveness of sins and in the unity of a true confession. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, grant our preschool this year uh, success, success in bringing uh, education to these young preschoolers, but not just the education of the world, but the education that you bring in Christ and your Holy Spirit, so that they may be guided in all truth as well as in the world. So bless Melinda and and, uh, uh, 
Christ, uh, uh, oh, Krista, there it is, Krista, Krista Tharp, as she cares for these people, as they all care for these kids, and bringing them this good news. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and for whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we remain standing for the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... We pray as our Lord has taught us and sing the closing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hear the words of our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We rise now for the dismissal. Now may this true body and true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul through the one true and saving faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same. In faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. receive his benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
Congregation may be seated for a few brief announcements, and I look to the congregation to see if there's any announcements that need to be brought forward. All right, I do have a couple of announcements. Uh, the first one that I have for you is a, a reminder that confirmation orientation is September 8th, that is uh, this Wednesday. Uh, so please have your 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th graders here at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And we're also going to do some candle lighting instructions for our 5th graders and some other things as well. So please plan on attending that. Uh, and then next Sunday is Grandparents' Day. And Grandparents' Day is the day that our 5th graders uh, get their confirmation Bibles, their confirmation uh, uh, hymnal, and their confirmation confirmation book. <laughs> right? They get all those things that day, and it's, uh, it's that passing up from generation to generation or passing down. Uh, so please, if you're a fifth grader, please plan on attending that. Uh, if your grandparents can't attend, that's all right. The parents are here. We'll let them pass it on and up. It goes through the line. Grandparents, parents, and if there's a great grandparent, bring them. We'll love them too. Right? So uh, that's a great opportunity for us to do that next Sunday. Also next Sunday, we will be installing all the Sunday school teachers, uh, preschool teachers, and all the other teachers of God's Word here in this place. So if you're a teacher of God's Word, uh, you'll be installed next Sunday as well. Uh, beginning next Wednesday, this Wednesday as well, September 8th, is going to be uh, the music for St. Paul. Uh, the bell choir starts at 5 o'clock and ends at 5.45. The choir starts at 6 and ends at 6.45. So if you desire, and even if you don't desire, I would encourage you to come. Right? It's a great opportunity to serve the Lord, serve your neighbor, and to sing, and to learn how to sing. Um, Pam's got an announcement back there before I got my last one. <laughs> no. Oh, my wife's saying, no, 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 I know. <laughs> my wife's saying, no, you can't get rid of our stuff quite yet. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. That's a great, a great uh, honor. And you guys are getting to go back this year? That's the hope or? God willing. God willing. Good, good. All right. Also, my, my final announcement uh, here is this, this Saturday, um, second, I, I just don't know how to say this, second Saturday sewing, Saturd, Saturd sewing, S A T U R D, S A T U R D, Saturd sewing, yeah. second Saturd sewing, September 11th, that's this Saturday. Uh, quilts and fabric kits for the World Relief are being uh, gathered and put together. There's no sewing needed at this time, but it'll start at 10 o'clock and end at 2, and that'll be in classroom 5. All right, any other announcements that I need that I might have forgotten? Or you need to bring forward. Like how big was your fish, Pastor? You'll have to guess. Uh, I don't have my phone on. We'll, we can talk about it out there. But uh, a great opportunity and uh, was very richly rewarded with, uh, with some rest. So thanks be to God for that. Thank you, Vicar, for not burning the place down. Of course, they didn't let me know. So, I mean, there was no communication, which, is, which I think was actually a first. A first with no communication. I said they either didn't need me or they really burnt the place down so <laughs> but uh, no god we got a, a great team great team well if there are no other announcements go in peace and serve the lord